Hi, I'm Trevor from Night Sky Voyager. This video is a little different from what I would normally post. Earlier this week, I learned of the passing of Al Nagler, the founder of Teleview. And I wanted to take a moment to share my condolences to his family and the community. And I wanted to share what he meant to me personally. I've always viewed Al's impact on amateur astronomy the same way that many people view Steve Jobs' impact on personal computing. Al and Steve are both visionaries in how they took an existing tool and transformed it into an experience. That's exactly what it's like the first time you look through a Teleview eyepiece, especially if you've only ever used entry-level ones before. It feels like the vast distance between you and the stars just dissolves away. You aren't looking at the universe anymore. You're peering into it. I had the privilege of meeting Al on a couple of occasions, and those memories mean a lot to me. Today, I'd like to share them with you in remembrance of him. Both of these stories take place in Cherry Springs State Park in North Central Pennsylvania, which isn't all that far away from Teleview headquarters in New York State. Especially during the two big star parties during the year, Teleview would always send a booth where they would have a few representatives there to talk about their different eyepieces and new product lines that were coming out. And for those of you who have ever been to uh, Cherry Springs, you'll know that the weather there can be quite unpredictable. And one year, uh, Al had come personally to staff his staff the Teleview booth. And that year just so happened to be probably one of the absolute rainiest uh, star parties that I've ever attended. During that visit, I don't think we got in even a minute of observing. We spent most of the time uh, in our tents because it was pouring rain. But in the evenings, uh, we would all go down to the local restaurants uh, to get out of the rain and to warm up a little bit. And I could finally remember Al Nagler there with his family and Teleview workers uh, in with the community, talking to everybody and enjoying making the best of a, of a really poor weekend. <laughs> uh, but you could just tell in how he interacted with people at, uh, about how much he loved the community that he was a part of. And having him there was almost like having a uh, celebrity amongst you. It was, it was great to see him there. But at the end of those star parties, there's typically a raffle. And I always liked the especially rainy star parties because most of the people would leave and that would increase your chances of winning something in the raffle. And that year I had put some tickets into a bin for an eight millimeter Delos eyepiece, which was a fairly new eyepiece line at the time and uh, you know, rather expensive. Uh, and it was a, uh, I was, it was great joy when I heard them calling my number saying that I had won the, won the eyepiece. But furthermore, it was very memorable for me because they had Al Nagler up there handing out all of the, uh, all of the Teleview eyepieces that people had won and uh, shaking their hand. What a, what a pleasant surprise. It was really, you could see the smile it's bringing to my face just recalling that. Uh, meeting Al and getting to shake his hand and receive one of his products was really, uh, really a happy moment for me. It's someone that you looked up to in the community, someone who had transformed the community so much and being able to interact with them even for that brief moment was really joyful for me. The other comment I would make about that especially rainy weekend was uh, most people had left and there was no reason that Al Nagler needed to stick around and wait through the rain. Uh, most of the vendors had packed up and left. There really was not many people that were sticking around anymore, but Al had stuck through the rain and wanted to interact with with his community and stayed till the very end. And it was a great pleasure getting to spend that time with him. Moving on to the second story, I'd like to preface it a little bit. I personally am very active in astronomy outreach. I'm president of my local astronomy club and spend most of my summer uh, 
going to public programs with telescopes. And at public programs, uh, I typically use some modest, very rugged eyepieces, uh, the kind that you don't mind if a kid touches the glass or there's a bit of mascara uh, left behind. But once in a while, I'll get an especially enthusiastic visitor uh, that will come up. And one of my favorite things to say after they've looked at an object is, do you think that's cool? Just wait until I put the Teleview eyepiece in. Their reaction is always immediate. You can hear their tone shift as their amazement just dials up to 11. And every time it brings a huge smile to my face. And it reminds me of a time when I was at Cherry Springs. Uh, it was a beautiful, perfectly clear evening. And uh, my friends and I would usually set up in the middle of the field where a lot of the tent campers and smaller telescopes would set up. Uh, the bigger Dobsonians and people with the big RVs set up on the outskirts so as not to block the view from everybody else. And my buddies and I were, it was the middle of the night, we were observing, we were having a great evening, and we heard a commotion coming from the far end of the field. It was like some kind of excitement was going on. And we finally got up the idea, we're going to go look and see what this is. Let's go find out what's going on. So... It's the middle of the night, we're hiking out to the edge of the field, following the noise, and we get out there, and there's just a massive Dobsonian telescope. I want to say it was 30 inches or something, just absolutely huge. And there's this big long line uh, leading up to the ladder to get up to the eyepiece. It was that big. And you would see people climb up there, and they would get up, and they'd look in the eyepiece, and it was just sheer astonishment. They, they took their breath away. And what in the world could they possibly be seeing in there? And after I'd been there for a few moments, you noticed standing down off to the side was Al Nagler. And what he had brought was a Teleview eyepiece. I think it was a 55 millimeter plossel. And onto it, he had found some way to add a night vision device. And this 30 inch telescope had the Eagle Nebula in it, which is a very famous object. Uh, there's a very famous Hubble photo of part of the Eagle Nebula called the Pillars of Creation. Uh, I'll put it up on the screen for those of you who don't aren't familiar with it. And they had Pillars of Creation and the Eagle Nebula in the eyepiece with this nighttime device or, or this night vision device on it. And when in your turn, you climb up, you would climb up the ladder and you look through the eyepiece, and it was absolutely stunning. Just, it looked almost like a Hubble picture. The brightness that you could see of this object that is normally just a faint kind of smudge in the eyepiece was really astonishing. It was, it was an experience of a lifetime. And it just took your breath away. And I can, I'll never forget seeing Al Nagler standing down at the bottom on the ground knowing he had brought this and had plugged this in and it had just drawn this huge crowd. And he was getting such enjoyment out of watching people's faces as they came down off of that ladder. It was a view that I will probably never see again for the rest of my life. And when I think about that smile that Al had on his face from being able to bring that to people and share that with them, share that experience with them, uh, it reminds me of the mini reaction I get when I drop in the Teleview eyepiece at star parties. Uh, I can really only imagine uh, how he felt in those moments. And I'm so grateful that he was there to share that experience and share that moment with, with all of us and find joy in it. In closing, thank you, Al, for all that you have done and given to this community. And thanks for being the visionary that you were that was able to enhance this hobby to such a new level and make it enjoyable for so many people. I really appreciate your contributions and we were so fortunate that you were able to give to your, the community what you did and you'll be sincerely, sincerely missed. Rest well, Al.